biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. What's up, everyone? You are listening to Locked On Now, local experts on the biggest stories throughout the NFL. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday morning. On today's show, we recap the big win for the New Orleans Saints during Monday Night Football and look ahead to Week 8 and the biggest questions around the AFC. But first, the Monday Night Football recap. The best performance. Hold up, hold up, hold up. The New Orleans Saints took home the victory in Seattle on Monday Night Football with a big 13-10 win over the Seahawks. Seattle has had a rough go since losing Russell Wilson to a broken finger, and they have yet to get a win since week four. The Saints advanced to four and two, sitting just behind the Bucs in the NFC South. Let's hear more from our Locked On Saints. Some good and some not so good by the New Orleans Saints who narrowly escaped with a Monday night football victory against the Seattle Seahawks. I'm Ross Jackson, host of the Locked on Saints podcast, New Orleans Saints, getting a 13 to 10 victory in Seattle. We saw some things that were characteristic to usual New Orleans Saints football. Alvin Kamara with a huge day, accounting for 58.9% of the Saints total offensive yardage and some great defensive play despite giving up a big 84 yard touchdown catch and run to DK Metcalf. Metcalf early on in the game to open up scoring. Only 83 receiving yards allowed on the 11 receptions that followed by Seattle receivers. So good defense and a nice rebound by that Saints defense. Over on the non-characteristic side of the spectrum, we saw inefficiency in the run game, inefficiency in the red zone offense where the Saints have been so successful so far this season. And the biggest concern continues to be this New Orleans Saints wide receiver group. The bottom line here is that the New Orleans Saints, Jameis Winston, Alvin Kamara, they're going to need help from these wide receivers. And we'll see if the New Orleans Saints are going to be able to find it either before the trade deadline or by getting Michael Thomas back sooner rather than later. But I'm not sure that's all that they need. For more on the New Orleans Saints, their struggles and their successes, make sure you're checking out the Locked On Saints podcast, free and available on all platforms, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Biggest Game. The Cleveland Browns will host the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 8, a battle between two AFC North teams. Baker Mayfield is still questionable to return for Sunday's matchup, but this is sure to be a great divisional competition. And both of our Locked On Browns and Locked On Steelers hosts will let you know what the biggest questions are around this game. This is Locked On Browns host Jeff Lloyd with your Browns' biggest question heading into Week 8. Sunday, Halloween, at home, at First Energy, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns now begin divisional play for the 2021 season. First game against Pittsburgh Steelers. Everybody in the AFC North currently is 500 or better. The Steelers come in 3-3 after their bye week. Browns coming in after the mini-bye, after the victory on Thursday Night Football. Nick Chubb, Jack Conklin, A.J. Green all returning to practice. As the Browns start to get healthier, and yes, Baker Mayfield, we don't have an answer on this as of this time. My guess is he's going to miss Sunday. Offensively, you need to get better. Defensively, you need to be more consistent. The Browns need to level up to start climbing the standings in the AFC North. Are they ready? We'll find out Sunday at First Energy on Halloween. Jeff Lloyd, Locked On Browns. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast, and the biggest question for the Steelers heading into their big Week 8 matchup with the Cleveland Browns is if the run defense can be fixed. They gave up over 120 rushing yards to Alex Collins, a backup running back for the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday Night Football heading into their Week 7 bye week. But now you face the Cleveland Browns, who even if Nick Chubb isn't back in time for this game. You saw what they were able to do with Dearness Johnson and missing multiple offensive linemen. If the Browns are able to run the ball in the Steelers, it's going to be a long Sunday all over again for, the, for them when they take on their division rival. But if they can fix the run game, it's going to be a big start. Chris Wormley, Steelers defensive tackle, talked about how a lot of the problems on Monday were, is, were involving communication and being in the right spots. We'll go over those details and a lot more here leading up to the Browns game on the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and of course, YouTube. The Chargers had a tough game against the New England Patriots last season in 2020, but do they look like a different team this year that can take on the Patriots with a new momentum? Our Locked On Chargers host, Daniel Wade, has more. 
Can the Chargers this weekend avenge their biggest blowout from the 2020 season? What's up guys, this is Daniel Wade here from Locked On Chargers. And that's my biggest question this week is if the Chargers can change things after getting blown out 45 to zero in 2020 against the New England Patriots who are coming to town on Sunday. And I think it starts with Justin Herbert who had his worst game of the season last year in that offensive rookie of the year season he had. He had two interceptions and zero touchdowns against the Patriots, looked frustrated and confused for most of the game. And then after that, can the Chargers learn from their mistakes in 2020? The Patriots last year ran for almost 180 yards on over 40 carries against the Chargers in that game. And special teams wise, Gunnar Olszewski had three punt returns for 145 yards and a touchdown. The Chargers were outplayed and they were absolutely outcoached and I'm excited to see how Brandon Staley fares against the greatest coach of all time in Bill Belichick because last year we saw the Lynn Bill Belichick matchup was pretty ugly. For all the latest on the Chargers, make sure to check out our new Locked On Chargers YouTube page and you can listen to the Locked On Chargers podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Your team every day. Coming up next, we'll go around the league to find out more big questions in the AFC with the help of some of our Locked On NFL hosts. You're listening to Locked On Now. Welcome back to Locked On Now. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday morning. Now, let's go around the league for more big questions in the AFC. Let's go around the league. Now, let me put this very simply. The Chiefs will lose most, if not all, credibility this year if they lose to the New York Giants in week eight. Kansas City has had a tough time this season after being completely humiliated by the Titans just last week in week seven. They are in desperate need of a W this weekend. Here is your Locked On Chiefs host with the biggest question of this game. Patrick Mahomes has cleared the concussion protocol and will play, but how will he play? I'm Ryan Tracy from Locked On Chiefs, and that's the big question this week. How can you support Patrick Mahomes to get him back to himself, stop turning the ball over, and find the solutions that are there to be had on the field from how modern defenses are attacking him and trying to fluster him this season? It comes down to the pass rush as well. If the Chiefs can get a hold of their protections, keep things cleaner for him and allow him to get the ball out quicker. I think that's the, really the formula that we're looking for. Will they adopt that plan? Will they continue to just bludgeon forward trying to do the same thing that they've been this whole run with Patrick Mahomes. The big play, looking deep all the time kind of offense. It comes down to a combination of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes together with some pass protection to get them on the right track, throwing the ball well and not turning it over. We'll have more for you this week on Locked On Chiefs. The Tennessee Titans have had some severe ups and downs this season and are looking to continue their momentum into this next week against the Colts after owning their game against the Kansas City Chiefs in week seven. Let's hear what questions our Locked On Titans host has for this game. Tyler Roland here with your Tennessee Titans biggest question heading into a week eight matchup on the road against the Indianapolis Colts and for the Titans it's all about consistency we have seen the best version of the Titans as they beat the Chiefs and the Bills we have also seen the worst version of the Titans with the loss against the Jets the Titans cannot afford to let down in week eight with a chance to bury the Indianapolis Colts and set themselves up to have an easy road to the AFC South division crown. The Titans can't play the Jekyll and Hyde game. They need to come out, play consistent football, go to the play action in the run game and offense, get pressure on Carson Wentz on defense, and make sure that they play a solid game against a division opponent that has given them a lot of trouble throughout the history of the Tennessee Titans. For more analysis, make sure you check out the Locked On Titans YouTube channel and the Locked On Titans podcast on whatever platform you do stream. And thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. And the Cincinnati Bengals are another team with some serious momentum right now heading into week eight, but the New York Jets will be the Cinderella story if they can stop them. Let's find out what the biggest questions for this game are with our Locked On Jets. Who's playing quarterback for the Jets on Sunday? I'm John from Locked On Jets, and the biggest question facing the New York Jets this week is who their starting quarterback will be when they face the Cincinnati Bengals. Zach Wilson is out two to four weeks with a sprained PCL. The team has a couple of different options, including Joe Flacco. The Jets reacquired the veteran quarterback on Monday from the Philadelphia Eagles for a late round pick. Flacco was the Jets' backup quarterback in 2020, starting four games when Sam Darnold was injured. 
The team could also go to Mike White, who finished Sunday's game against New England after Wilson left with his knee injury. Additionally, veteran quarterback Josh Johnson is on the practice squad, although Johnson has been in the NFL since 2008 and has only one win on his resume. For more on the Jets, tune in to Locked On Jets. The Denver Broncos are another team that desperately need a win after losing the last four straight. Can they achieve their goal this week against the Washington football team? Cody Rourke with Locked On Broncos has more. The biggest question for the Denver Broncos ahead of their Week 8 matchup against the Washington football team has to do with how is the defense going to stop the run this week? I'm Cody Rourke, host of Lockdown Broncos, and the biggest question for the Broncos this week is how do you stop the run? Well, the Washington football team has a dynamic duel between Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick, but how are the Broncos going to stop a team that essentially has success running the football when they couldn't stop a third-string Browns running back who really took it to them in Week 7 on Thursday Night Football? Not to mention the injury to Mike Purcell is he had certain surgery on one of his fingers. He could play in a couple weeks. He could play this week. It will likely be casted, but the question remains who's going to step up, especially as the Broncos linebacker depth right now is tested. New acquisition, Kenny Young. Will he get the start on Sunday against the Washington football team? This is the biggest question for the Denver Broncos ahead of the week eight matchup against the Washington football team. The Jaguars had their first win of the season in week six over in London, England. And after their bye week in week seven, they are now headed to Seattle to take on the Seahawks, who could also use a win after losing to the Saints on Monday Night Football. More with the biggest questions on this matchup is our Locked On Jaguars. Hi, I'm Tony Wiggins with Locked On Jaguars. The biggest question for the Jaguars is how do you handle success coming off of your first win? And how do you handle it coming off of a bye? I hope they didn't celebrate too much last week when they had a little bit of time off and they come back with a professional attitude. Urban Meyer said today, no more excuses. The excuses of being a new coach with a new quarterback, with a rookie quarterback, those things are over. I even mentioned that on my podcast yesterday before he said it, because it's true. Let's see how the Jaguars respond with the trip to the Pacific Northwest this week to play the Seattle Seahawks to see if the Jaguars can make it too straight and get off to a good start after the bye for the rest of the season. That was Locked On Now. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Make your second listen, Locked On NFL. Locked On, your team every day.